Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to some of you. I'm Kristen Tyler. Thank you for joining me today for our fast and furious webinar on how to use Lockpark for family law. I'm gonna wait just a moment here to allow some more folks to join us. Um, and in the meantime, I hope your Thursday is off to a great start. I can't believe it's Thursday already. Hi, everyone. Awesome, thanks for joining us. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and queue up my PowerPoint. All right, folks. So hopefully you are in the right place uh, that you plan on being right now for our webinar. Uh, once again, for everyone who just joined us, uh, welcome to How to Use Law Clerk for Family Law. I am Kristen Tyler. I'm an attorney in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I am also one of the co-founders of Law Clerk. And I know your time is valuable, so I'm gonna do my best to tell you some great tips for how you can use Law Clerk for your family law practice today in hopefully about 20 minutes, okay? So without further ado, let's get rolling. Okay, so first off, hopefully if you are here, you already know what Law Clerk is, but if not, in a nutshell, at Law Clerk, we help match up busy attorneys with our nationwide network of freelance lawyers. We have over, we have just under 3,000 freelance lawyers all across the country. So no matter where you are or what you practice in, we have folks that can help you for those times when you're slammed and you need an extra set of hands around the office. There's no fee to sign up, there's no monthly fee. All of the work is done on a project by project basis on a flat fee price that you set. And you better bet we're gonna dig into that a little bit more here later on in the presentation. So, all right, as you are managing your law practice and your life, uh, I think a lot of lawyers inev inevitably start thinking about what's the best use of their time. You know, when you start your firm, you're gonna be the one doing all the jobs, answering the phones, doing the intakes, doing marketing, and oh yeah, the legal work too. But over time, as you grow and you want to continue growing, you really need to take a deep dive into what's the best use of your time and figure out ways to delegate and outsource the other tasks. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is outsourcing, um, specifically in terms of outsourcing substantive legal work to free up your time. You know, our outsourcing is a smart move for a lot of reasons. Um, it's a great way to keep your overhead low so you're not building up a payroll. It's a great way for you to have flex flexible staffing so you get the help you need when you need it without having to pay someone full time, even if your caseload isn't quite as heavy. It allows you to connect with expertise on cases. It also um, can help you increase your revenue, and I'll give some details on that later on. And all of this combined really can give you a competitive edge. If you're competing for clients in your market, um, these are you know, a lot of cost savings that you can pass along to your own clients and hopefully win you more clients. So what are some types of substantive legal work that you can outsource? Of course, legal research. Um, drafting work, whether it's a letter, a motion, a brief, a contract, an agreement, um, discovery. I think every lawyer I talk to says, oh, discovery, they would love to outsource that. You can also outsource a lot of marketing materials um, and so much more, things like intake forms or em employee handbooks, um, terms of service for your website. There's so much substantive legal work that really takes a lot of time that you can outsource to freelance lawyers to better use your own time. Okay, so how do you get started? Well, number one, if you already have an account with Law Clerk, one of the best ways for you to get started is to connect with your dedicated Law Clerk advisor if you haven't already. Um, your dedicated Law Clerk advisor is there to be like a concierge, to be a consultant for you to help guide you as you're using Law Clerk to figure out better ways for you to use the service and leverage our freelance lawyers. Another great resource if you're trying to get started is to head over to our uh, website to the attorney resources section. I'm going to show you that in a second. And we've got a great project delegation worksheet and some other resources um, that you can check out there. And last but not least, if you've been on the fence about getting started with outsourcing, just pick a project and get rolling. Give it a try, you know, pick something small because what do you really have to lose? Okay. So when you go on our, our website, lawclerk.legal, I was just pointing out our attorney resources page, and that's up at the top. Hopefully you see my red arrow up, up at the top there in the header. If you click on attorney resources, you're going to go to a different page, and one of the best things we have on that page is a whole variety of sample projects by area of law. And of course, you'll see we have family law there, but if you happen to practice in other areas, we've got some guides there to help give you some ideas and guide you in other areas of law as well. Um, lots of good stuff on this attorney resources page. So definitely take a minute and check that out. Okay, so in terms of family law, you know, one of the best ways for you to get ideas of how to use the site is from looking at what other attorneys are doing. So here's a short list of some recent family law projects um, to give you an idea of how family law attorneys are using us, 
what they're paying for that work. Um, you can snap a picture of that with your phone if you want, or um, don't worry, we also have all of this in that download on the, the attorney resources page. So these are some recent examples of, of how attorneys are using us. Here's a few more, um, just to give you some additional ideas. Oops, go back here and give you a minute to look at this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, a lot of motion work, discovery, all of these good things. You can get a lot of different help. So I mentioned earlier that one of the best things about outsourcing is that it can help increase your revenue. So maybe you're wondering how that works, because maybe you thought that outsourcing was really more of an expense. So can lawyers make money by outsourcing? The answer is an overwhelming yes, okay? The key here is you have to be mindful of the model rule 1.5, which is reasonableness. So the rules, the ethics opinions, all of the collateral says that attorneys can uh, charge a reasonable market rate for work performed by a freelance lawyer under their supervision. You know, this is just the same way that big firms have made money on all of their associates for years. And there's no reason why a solo or small firm attorney can't do the same thing. So what does this mean in terms of actual dollars? Let's say that you hire a freelancer to draft a motion to um, modify child support. You want to, your client wants to go after increased child support from the, the children's parent. And you, you find a freelancer, they agree to write that motion for you for $1,000. Um, they're still going to keep track of their time through the law clerk system and come back to you with a time card. And so maybe at the end of that work, they're going to report to you that they worked 8.5 hours. And you determine that based on their level of experience and your current market rates, it's reasonable to charge their time to the client at $200 an hour. So that means you can charge the client $1,700 for that motion, but you only paid the freelancer $1,000. And this means that you're bringing an additional $700 of revenue or profit into your firm without you having to stay up until two in the morning, burning the midnight oil to do all this work yourself. Now, imagine if you did this twice a week, if you did this four times a month, if you did this 30 times over the course of the year. This could really help you get a lot more work done and bring a substantial stream of additional revenue into your firm without adding to your recurring overhead, your bottom line. So um, this is really the exciting part about how you can leverage this. And it's, it's great to know. So another really common question we get is, well, okay, I'm, I'm curious about outsourcing, but who are the freelancers? How do I know if they're really talented folks? So, you know, here we go. We've got Narisa. She's a really top rated appellate freelancer. Um, Carrie, she actually has her own solo practice in Texas and does a ton of family law work in Texas. Uh, John's a retired Harvard law grad who just still loves the practice of law and comes in to do some high level drafting work for attorneys from time to time. He's just great to work with. Everybody loves him. Uh, Rachel used to be a nurse. Um, and so now she's a full-time freelance lawyer and mom. And, you know, she's got a great eye for especially reviewing medical records. If you have things like that ever come up. Um, we've got Tyson, who's a county prosecutor by day. He does some freelance work by night with the permission of his employer. A lot of government um, and nonprofit employees are allowed to freelance with their uh, employer's permission as long as they do so outside their jurisdiction. Uh, we, this is one of our top rated bankruptcy freelancers. Kim does a lot of corporate and business work. And Becky, I just adore her. She worked in a firm setting for about 10 years. And now she's the stay at home mom and, and does about 10 to 15 hours of freelance work a week to still keep her skills sharp. And I think that's just a great way to, to work with a freelance lawyer. So these are just a very few of our thousands of freelance lawyers. They are all so amazing and talented and definitely the recipe for success. If you are looking for ways to succeed with law clerk to succeed with outsourcing is to take full advantage of our teams feature. The teams feature allows you to basically favorite your top freelancers when you find them. So if you work with someone on a project and you think, gosh, they are a total rock star. I hope I get to work with them again in the future. Or I have this other project I'd like to send to them right away. You can add that person to your team and go back to them on repeat time and time again. This can really allow you to develop a lot of rapport and working efficiencies when you have a small group of freelancers on your team that you go to time and time again. So in thinking about this Teams feature, there's a couple of best practices. Number one, I know that a lot of family law lawyers only do family law, but some of you may also have other practice areas. So if you do have other practice areas, you can build a team by practice areas. So maybe you build a bankruptcy team, a criminal team, an estate planning team, of course, a family law team, maybe a real estate team too. These are just a few examples, but you could cultivate teams by practice areas if you have multiple practice areas at your firm. 
Another way to take advantage of teams is to build teams by the different skill sets you need. So maybe you find that um, over the course of your cases in family law, you need people to come in and help with document review from time to time. Maybe you need some people that can really help you hammer out your discovery work. Of course, you're gonna need a litigation team, maybe a research team, and maybe even an appellate team if you handle appellate work as well. So you could build them by kind of uh, skill sets that you need depending on the extent of your practice. Last but not least, you can also build a team with your favorite freelancers and maybe you even assign a freelancer mentally um, to help you over the life of an entire case. So maybe you had a great time working with freelancer Jessica and you think, oh gosh, she would be perfect for this new case I just got in based on the facts of the case. So first I'm gonna have her do this research memo, Later, I'm gonna have, have her send a demand letter asking for increased child support. If that doesn't work, we're gonna file a motion to increase child support. Of course, they're gonna oppose it. So then she can write the apply, reply brief and maybe reach a deal and she could draft the settlement agreement. So that allows the freelancer to get to know the case in detail, to work on different projects over the life of the case. And keep in mind that the freelancers really like it if you can phase out bigger cases like this to them and projects so that they get paid regularly without having to wait till the whole case is done. So those are a couple of great ways for you to collaborate with our awesome freelancers with the Teams feature and keep your cases moving. All right, a few more last reminders. Uh, don't forget, as I've mentioned, we do offer freelancers that work in other areas besides just family law. So if you have other practice areas where you need to get some work outsourced, we can help you there. There's no monthly fees to sign up. So if you don't already have a law clerk account, there's no time like the present to go ahead and sign up for one. That way it's ready to go when you need some extra help. And last but not least, we offer a satisfaction guarantee on every single project. This means if ever you get work product back and you're not satisfied with it, we want to know about it and we want to make it right for you. Maybe that means getting your money back to you. Maybe that means getting someone else to complete the work, to redo it. Whatever that means, we stand behind our satisfaction guarantee because we believe in the top rated quality of our freelancers' work, and we know they can really help you get more done. So um, I am happy to answer any questions if you want to drop those in the chat. If you haven't already done so, I would invite you to connect with us on social media. We're on all the big platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, we've got a ton of other great videos on the YouTube channel if you want to go find the Law Clerk YouTube channel, if you like learning by video and this interactive uh, style. Um, and last but not least, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our awesome Instagram account. If you like Instagram, connect with us there. Our, our handle is at shark on the run and our adorable little shark is there. So again, the website is lawclerk.legal. No fee to sign up, no monthly fee. As soon as you sign up, you're going to be matched up with a dedicated law clerk advisor who can help guide you to success with law clerk. So I saw a couple of questions come in. Let me go take a peek here and see what we've got. Thank you everyone for joining us. I see a couple of familiar names on there. Um, hi, Joe. Hi, Ryan. And let me see what our questions are. Uh, Joe had a question about billing. I might need a little more information, but so the way it works with the economics on Law Clerk is all of our projects are done on a flat fee. So if you hire a freelancer and you say, I need you to um, prepare discovery requests uh, you know, interrogatories, re requests for production documents, you're going to set your own flat fee price for that work. So you might say, okay, I'm willing to pay $400 to get these um, discovery requests prepared. The law clerk that you select to do the work uh, will agree to do it for that flat fee. There's no bartering back and forth. Law clerk takes a commission on that fee. Our commission is 28%. The net amount goes to the freelancer and we handle all of the credit card payment fees and um, also we do the tax reporting for you. So that's one less administrative headache that you need to remember to do at the end of the year. So we do all of the tax reporting for you. Now, just because you're paying them a flat fee and I know that might throw some of you off when most family law lawyers I know work on, a, on an hourly billing model. Um, one way to think about setting that flat fee is to, in your mind, estimate how many hours you think that work will take. So if you think it will take someone four hours to draft discovery requests, um, then maybe you're willing to pay $100 an hour. Obviously, the flat fee would be $400. We're seeing attorneys pay anywhere from about $75 to $200 an hour, just depending on how complicated the work is and how quickly you need it back to you. Um, and again, this is one of the areas that if it's throwing you for a loop with the, hour, with the flat fee project billing to the freelancers, um, your dedicated law clerk advisor can definitely help guide you and help you find your sweet spot for what you want to pay for the work that you need to get done. 
And then as the slide showed on the back end, um, you will still get a time card from them. They're required to track their time for a couple of reasons. Number one, we know a lot of you are billing your clients hourly. And so you need that data to bill their time back to your client at a reasonable market rate. We also know that you want that data to know if you're pricing your projects appropriately. If you are posting work that you thought would take four hours and it ended up taking that freelancer seven, then maybe you want to pay a little bit more next time you have a similar type of work. So that um, time reporting data is really key to help you uh, hopefully price appropriately and also bill the work to your clients. All right, a couple more questions. So, um, okay, question. Great question. Um, Carrie asks about if you need to hire someone from your jurisdiction to do the work for you. Um, so the question that is, the way the law clerk model is set up is all of our freelancers work in what's called a paraprofessional role, like a paralegal. Think about a paralegal. You wouldn't send a paralegal to court. You wouldn't send a paralegal to take a deposition because that would cause the paralegal to uh, engage in the unauthorized practice of law. So our freelancers are there to help you with all of the written work, okay? This is meant to free up your time to do those other tasks that are a better use of your time. And so because they're only doing that written work, they're doing it under your direct supervision. And what this does is it opens up the doors so that if you are an attorney in California, maybe you find an attorney in Texas or Florida who has deep level expertise on this issue you're dealing with, you can collaborate with them in this freelance model because they're not engaging in the practice of law. They're working for you under your direct supervision, just like a traditional law clerk would, uh, if you ever think about hiring someone right out of school or for, as a summer law clerk. So uh, their scope of work is limited. And because of that, it does expand it so that you can do work with freelancers outside of your jurisdiction. Okay, just closely supervise that work and you'll be set. Let me check a few more questions here. Okay, Joe had a follow-up question on the billing. So it sounds like you want to know if you can hire someone to help with reviewing the time of your work at your office, kind of some administrative work internal. Absolutely. We have a ton of attorneys that use the freelancer's time and, and expertise even to help with administrative tasks around their own firm, whether it's coming up with new employee handbooks. Um, we've had a lot of attorneys recently having hiring freelancers to come up with new guidelines or employee handbooks for with rules for working from home, what the firm expects, what's, what are going to be the new rules of engagement when you're working from home. Um, so definitely, if you have a project in mind that relates to an administrative task with your internal timekeeping that you want someone to take a deep dive into and learn more, they can absolutely help with that. All right. I'm going back through to see if we have any other questions. These are great. So if you have more questions, by all means, please keep them coming. I think we've answered them all for now. And I did promise to keep you under 20 minutes. If you have additional questions, you can find me uh, on social media. You can also find me ktyler at lawclerk.legal is my email, ktyler at lawclerk.legal. And again, if you've already registered for an account, um, you have a dedicated law clerk advisor and they, guys, they are just gold. They are your go-to for any questions. Don't hesitate to collaborate with them, ask them questions, use their time. That's what they're there for because, you know, they all work with a couple hundred lawyers all over the country. They can help give you insights to what's working for other lawyers uh, so that you can have similar success. So thank you for joining me to learn a little bit more about how you can use Law Clerk to boost your family law practice. I wish you all um, a lot of success and health. Be well. Let us know how we can help you. Have a good day.